Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Battlefield, presented to you by the Curtis Brown Foundation. On this episode, Curtis is joined by his friend Joe Waltz, a fellow veteran and a small business owner. We are on the topic of small businesses impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic again, because we need to talk about it. We need to talk about how they've been impacted because their lives, their financial success, and their families are dependent on the success of their small businesses. Curtis and Joe talk about some of their experiences while serving our country, how Joe began his helicopter business, as well as the dedication, sacrifices, and hard work involved with getting a small business off the ground. Joe also shares his heart about how he has been impacted by the pandemic. Interestingly, the pandemic can be compared to what people experience on the battlefield which is an enemy that can't be seen or identified. Veterans often return home to find themselves separated from the people they've been dependent on for so long. They've been separated from the people that matter to them. And that's just what the pandemic has done to us, hasn't it? It separated us from our loved ones. We all need to be sympathetic to one another because the pandemic has uniquely impacted all demographics of people. In order for us to overcome the pandemic, we need to keep open hearts and open minds so that we can encourage each other and inspire each other while we navigate out of our current battlefield. Sitting here with my good buddy Joe Walls with uh, National Helicopter Solutions, man. Yes, sir. So, so what's the solution to uh, what's going on today, man? <laughs> I don't know. The solution for me would be more business. That's what I need right now to keep the the money spooling and keep the economy going, keep my employees paid. That's that's what's important to me right now and my family and their families. Well, I noticed when we walked in today that uh, your girls are here. Yeah, they're in your office. Uh, Let's, it's just kind of so will people know where we're at. We're at your hangar. Right. So we're at West Houston Airport, uh, Barker Cypress and I-10 area. And the kids, that's their office. I just work in it, right? They, <laughs> they, they pretty much take over the whole hangar whenever they get here. But, um, yeah, we're at West Houston Airport, so this gives us easy access to downtown. We can do quick tour flights into downtown. Uh, we're right in the energy corridor, so we can do charters and that kind of thing for, for local businesses. You have another part of this business too, besides just charters right. and, and tours. So we have heli hog hunt. That's kind of how we got our start was doing the helicopter hog hunts. We go out to central Texas in the hill country and we chase down the, the feral hogs from the helicopter and provide some relief for the landowners who are kind of fighting with them to grow crops or to raise cattle and that kind of thing. And people have fun doing that. Yeah, have an absolute blast doing that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one day. It's going to be a good time. Yes, it is. Uh, you, you know, Joe, you and I, we met um, when you first kicked off on the campaign trail. Very, yeah, I think the first week is maybe a week or two in is when I went on your show. Right. That was a lot of fun. It was and a good time. It's been a, a, a neat journey watching you grow and like you were talking about earlier of how just uh, even speaking in public, um, being you know relevant to people, understand and want, understanding what they're talking about because you've got to get out, you've got the chance to get out and get involved with their lives too. Absolutely, yeah. That's the biggest thing about a congressional campaign is it's not so much what you went into it knowing it's but what what did you take away from it, win or lose? What do you know about the community? What do you know about its people as you come out of the campaign? Whether it's because you've moved on to the next round or because you know it's over for you, but you know so much more about your community and what's important to them. That's huge. And, and one thing that you understand a lot about what's going on in the community is what they're struggling with right now with this, this coronavirus. Absolutely. You know, 
Um, that, that's kind of how our company started. We were worried every day about where we were going to get our next buck. Where are we going to, you know, how are we going to pay our employees? How are we going to pay the, the rent? And so I understand completely. We started this company with literally 300 bucks and, and an idea. And uh, we had to work, you know, 18, 20 hour days for the first two years to get it to where it is now. And unfortunately, where it is now is dealing with this pandemic. And so we're facing some of the same challenges. We're having cash flow issues. We're having, you know, at the beginning of this, we still operated, and now it's just you know completely dead. We don't, we couldn't sell a tour if we were giving them away. So, right, um, definitely a struggle for everybody in the community. And and I just, I'm blessed that you know my wife is an essential employee, and that I'm an essential employee, and I, I fly you know medevac here in the community. So I'm able to continue to work and continue to get paid, and and uh, I've been able so far to continue to pay my employees. So that's that's been a that's blessing a great for place me. to be. Absolutely, and a lot of that came to the struggles that brought this together to begin with is understanding that, hey, we've got to be prepared for anything. Absolutely. I, I think of two of your journey as uh, running for Congress of also preparing you with the numerous hours. I remember every time we'd get together, we'd, we'd find that time for coffee and you'd be exhausted. I needed every ounce of that coffee every time we, <laughs> we met for that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's exhausting. I was, um, I worked seven on seven off. So you know, two weeks a month, I'm, I'm essentially off, but I'm running this business. And when I'm working, it's a 12 hour day or a 12 hour night. So when I'm going to events and I'm going to things, yeah, absolutely. I had just come off or was about to go on a 12 hour shift when I was at that meet and greet or whether I was out there, you know, knocking on doors. It was, uh, it was back to the, you know, 16, 18 hour days uh, to get the message out. And now you even, you've even progressed more into becoming a teacher. Yeah, yeah, no, I I want to use the name that I did make for myself uh, to do good in the community. You know, the people like you that I've met and some of the people at some of the churches and just different organizations. I want to continue to, to help people and guide people and, and do good for the community in, in every way that I can. So what are we sitting in right now? Tell, let's tell them a little bit about what well, we're sitting this in right is now. A, uh, this is a twice overhauled Robinson R44 Raven 2. So this is the most popular helicopter in the world. They outsell the next best selling helicopter 8 to 1. Um, it's a great four passenger little helicopter. It's very capable. And this is what we do everything in, whether it's our charters, our tours, um, aerial survey, real estate work pipeline surveys, power line surveys, and of course we take the doors off and this is where we hunt the hogs from also. <laughs> so it's very versatile. It is very versatile, but that's helicopters in general. They're, they're the, you know, one of the best machines I think uh, we've ever had as a society available to us, whether it's fighting fires or providing air medical or you know, we're just leisurely activities as well, but there's nothing quite like a helicopter. Yeah, you know, I remember the first discussion we had on my radio show, Battlefield Connections, we were talking about what we did in the Army. Um, and both of us just happened to have a little bit to do with Chinooks. Yeah, no, we both worked on Chinooks for at least a time period. That was uh, the majority of my career, so almost 11 years all in the back of Chinooks, whether I was fixing them or flying in the back. Um, delivering supplies or troops on target, I, that was you know a second home to me. I, I slept in it, I ate in it, I you know breathed and, and lived every moment in the back that, of that thing. That thing's a beast. I, I was talking to an old guy one time, and uh, this was over in Iraq, and this was before I even started working on it. I yeah. Just I, looking at it on a, on the um, on the pad, and I said, man, what? How in the world does this thing get off the ground? Because they're huge. Absolutely. And the old guy goes, there was a, um, a, a um, C-5 sitting over there in the background. And he looks over at the C-5. He says, you see that thing there? I said, yeah, that's a C-5. He goes, and you see this, this Chinook here? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, it's kind of like this, buddy. You put enough power behind a sheet of concrete, she'll fly too. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely true. Absolutely. Uh, I remember when I was uh, in, in my first... Uh, four years in the service we, we were um, over in Iraq I remember flying the, the big old blivets you guys carrying the big old blivets of water out there man that we needed that water every drop every drop you know we did that my my first deployment we did a lot of water hauling uh, for the Marine Corps we were attached to the third Marine Air Wing and we took I mean 
I couldn't tell you how many gallons of water we took. And those guys made sure we had enough room to put that water down on their camp every <laughs> time. We never had an issue with getting any help out of those guys because no they, were, they were very thirsty. That was our lifeline. Absolutely. So as we look at, uh, you know, we, drove, we looked around the airport. It's, it's really quiet out here right now. It's very quiet. Um, actually, most of the flights that are out, if you see aircraft in the air, most of it's uh, private aircraft. It's general aviation um, has kind of taken over the sky. Guy, and that's people going up by themselves and right. their social distancing and altitude instead of horizontally. Well, I, and that works too. You know, I can kind of social distance on the golf course. Yeah. And it, me, it's natural. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's easy when your ball's always in the woods, right? That's right. Everybody man. else is on the fairway and yours is in the woods. You don't have to go anywhere well, near you people. Know, I, I made life a little rough for myself. Why not continue to live in the rough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 100%. <laughs> but, uh, I love it out at Pecan Grove. You just live a few miles from down the road from yeah, me. Yeah, just right in y'all's backyard. Yep. So what are your uh, plans as, as moving forward? Um, what would you say to, to other people to encourage them as we're going through this? You know, just pray. Number one, realize that, that somebody else is in control, and that's God. He's in control of this all. The good, the bad, the ugly, he's going to, you know, take us through it and out of it, above it all, and we'll get there. But it's just to not give up. You know, if if you're feeling down, you're not feeling like things are going the way you need, hey, reach out to me. I'm, You know, my phone number is all over social media and that kind of thing now. <laughs> Anybody can feel free to, to give me a call if they just need someone to talk to or they just, you know, need some business advice or right. need, you know, a little bit of um, encouragement or, you know, they need to find the resources that can get them or their business through this. I'd be happy to talk to anybody in our community about those things. That's awesome. How's Erica and your daughter? How are they handling this? They're, they're good. They're good. They need to social distance from my house. I need them to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to sharing all that space all day, every day. So, you know, it's actually a blessing because the kids usually spend summers with their moms. They live with me full time, but they go to their moms in the summer. And this is the longest I've had them, Right. you know, with them not in school. So it's it's been really fun to have them around, get all their schoolwork done. And then we, we go out to the lake. We've done some fishing. And, uh, and my wife is very happy that we bought an old derelict boat that they're going to help me restore. So. So they're going to work they're with their hands a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. There, that's that's great. That's a great idea. Well, let's uh, kind of walk around. I want you to kind of talk about the helicopter. And, and you know, I, I could use that little pun earlier that I had that, you know, we came here, we already had our prop. Oh, our prop set up. Yes. Yeah, they're on there permanently. It, it's there's it's a very simple helicopter, and I don't want, you know, I don't want to get too technical. Oh, they're about 40 feet long. It's got a rotor diameter of 35 feet, 33 feet. And um, I mean, that's really it. Four seats. I, what, what do you want to know? What do you not know about what helicopter? What is the altitude that this thing can fly? So we can fly 9,000 feet above the ground or 14,000 feet above sea level. And the reason for that is we have a cowled engine, right? You can't see the engine right now. Right. But we don't have a fire extinguishing system in there. So if we had an engine fire, we have to be able to get on the ground in five minutes. And even if I completely shut off the engine. It would take five minutes to get from 9,000 feet to the ground. And yeah, and the ejection seats just aren't effective. Anymore. Yeah, no, it puts you right in the, the blades, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so they, they fly uh, pretty high, but typically helicopters keep it within 1,000 feet of the ground just because we don't need to go high. There's no, right. no purpose There's behind no it. There's no purpose yeah. behind it, right. Um, you're effective where you're at. Um, so, Joe, as for everybody out there listening, and we're walking through this coronavirus, it's really not a tragedy, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, no, you gotta take advantage of what you can. You know, for me, it's I have my kids and my wife home all day, every day. And, um, it's a blessing and a curse, right? So uh, we're fighting for space, but you know, we're blessed to have the space to get away from each other yeah, within our exactly, own home. But exactly it's right. also great to just be able to teach them things and show them things and for them to see us working from home. They get to see us all day that, hey, when I'm at school, these people are actually doing something. You know, <laughs> the checks that don't just roll in over nothing that's, so that's so true so they've they've i think it's you know take advantage of the learning opportunities that are there and rebuild those relationships 100 because you, absolutely you just like on the, whether it be at work or on the campaign trail you were go 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 and it's the reality in life is is we get busy uh, absolutely yeah and this is almost like god saying okay i'm going to allow something i'm not going to make it happen i'm going to allow it 
to slow you down to realize what's important. Yeah, no, it's great. We don't have uh, all of the distractions of sports and, and arts and entertainment and that kind of thing. And we just need to look at what's important to us. And uh, God's put us in our houses with our family. And, and I think there's a reason for that. We all get to, to reconnect and love one another That's again. That's right, get to know each other again. And yeah, I, I, I seen a post on Facebook with the beginning of this, this guy was sitting there going, yeah, I was sitting in my living room and I went to look for the remote and there was some lady there with it. <laughs> it was his wife. It was his wife, you know. <laughs> in other words, he'd been so busy. Both of them had been so busy. They, ne they never seen each other. Yeah. And it was like, it's an opportunity to re reconnect, reconnect with our kids. We've had the opportunity to walk around for Con Grove and get to know people we never seen out before. It's amazing how many people are No, there's nothing to do, so everybody's walking. I, yeah. That's what I've noticed. So I didn't realize how many people lived in this neighborhood, but everybody's out walking. I met my next door neighbor. We've been in Pecan Grove for three years, and I met one of my ne next door neighbors for the first time at the mailbox. Wow. And, and it was in the morning, and it's because he's usually at work, and I'm usually out working. And, and so um, it was interesting because we had a lot in common, but yeah. we never knew it. Yeah. Yeah, no, same thing, uh, you know, on the campaign trail. We took, um, you know, a lot of times it was just five minutes passing, coming and going with the wife, and, you know, tag in, tag out, who's feeding the kids, who's right. bathing the baby, and just, <laughs> you know, as we're going. So... Um, no, it's an incredible opportunity, as, as sad as it is for some and as scary as it may be for others, uh, those of us that, that are healthy and those of us that have the ability to just reconnect with family and friends and, That's right. and uh, keep close. You know, the last time I seen this baby fly, Alan West was Alan in it. Alan right? West was in it. Threatening to fast rope out. Exactly. Yeah, That's, if that if was... Kenny couldn't get him on the ground, he was going to take said, a rope. Give me a rope. So the next time that Alan West is in there, we'll all be we'll, there, we'll right? We'll all be in there. We're all going to yeah. be heading to Fort Hood. We're going to head to Fort Hood, share, share more about our mission, what we're doing with the Curtis Brown Foundation, with Beyond the Battlefield, Overcoming Life's Landmines, which is what this show is. Absolutely. And so we're we'll, all, we'll be we're there. All, you and I have been on the battlefield. One thing that I found interesting, and I want to get your perspective from it, is if we look back to the battlefield, and though the, we not we we rarely seen the enemy, but we felt the effects effects of it, didn't we? Absolutely, and yeah. that's kind of what the virus is. So I, w I wanted you to kind of uh, elaborate on what you see, kind of given a, an analogy from the battlefield. You know, uh, for us, it was it was realizing that everybody's got a place in this, right? So even though I'm not maybe necessarily in direct contact with the enemy on every single night, but those those waters that I delivered and the food that I delivered, and even mail that we took, because we hauled the mail. Once that was it, crucial, Once it man. gets to Iraq, the mail is in the back of the helicopter. Yeah, that was crucial. And so taking that, which is such a morale boost, as we know, we learned that all the way oh, from yeah. basic training, that one letter can really make or, or break a day or a week for us. Right. And so having the... the um, the experience of, of not being directly in combat at times, but realize, just take a step back and say, okay, how did we help the overall mission today? You know, that, that's powerful, and that's what we can do today is not, not spread misinformation, right. spread facts, you know, encourage, encourage. others yeah. and, and pray and, and, you know, realize and spread the message that that's what's going to get us all through this together. When you talked about the mail, how big of a morale boost it was, you understood that because you personally looked forward to your own, didn't you? Absolutely. My, my Amazon package might have been in that box we were hauling. <laughs> We were so going to get it. Yeah, I, 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 I was personally it, yeah. a vested interest in getting that mail where it needed to go. Yeah, because we understood how important it was to us as well as the others. Yeah, and we just, that's what we need to think about. You know, the community, everybody's got different ideas and different plans. And the only talk about facts and encourage one another. That's and we'll right. get through and it. And we understand, too, you and I understood it more with me uh, being on police action with Major Warner uh, there throughout Iraq. I started understanding key things like he's going through the same struggles I am. He's on the same battlefield I'm on. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, age, it, it doesn't matter. My, my children worry about some of the things that I worry about, right. or maybe even different things, you know. They're upset because they like school. They miss their friends, and they want to go back to school. And, you know, I want them to go back to school. <laughs> I don't know how they did any schoolwork without 6,000 calories going into their body throughout the day. But You've had that the, same problem. The same there, issue Omar. here, well, yeah. You know, you know have, have you seen, we, you know, Micah's up to here now. Well, see, he's just, he's putting it in and growing yeah, inch by he, inch. It's got to go somewhere. At least it's making him grow. Yeah, we need to send them back um, as soon as possible. <laughs> That's right. Well, and they need it. They no, need they the, do. They need their friends. Just, you know, it's kind of like when we were in the service, when, when we got out and we got separated from 
the people we knew the best, you know, that we counted on. You know, you got, they had our six. We understood that. They understood we had theirs. And the relationships we built on that battlefield, it's kind of like what the, our, I think that our kids are going through separated from, they don't talk about it much, but neither did we. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's funny because when you get out and you start talking to civilians, civilians have this, they have this idea of what soldiers do and what airmen and Marines do. And, and they try to relate and they say, oh, yeah, you know, I saw on that geo special about that but it's it's not the same as having somebody that that was there also and that can understand those things right and um and for the kids it's the same way you know i don't know what they do at school i don't know what well, they're missing i, I learned you know? a key element about school though about school work you know i taught last year this year i'm just athletic director and but i learned what my, what michael learns at school it's called stuff <laughs> you know I mean, he has all these books full of stuff. Do your yeah. kids did learn the same thing? Yeah. Stuff? Do I ask them what did what did y'all do there? Oh, stuff. That's, it's amazing. It's that a, word carries a lot of knowledge. How, if you check your tax bill, it's expensive stuff too. <laughs> I promise. That's good. So when we look back to uh, when we were in the military, we look back at you know the relationships we built and how. When we, when we were separated from it, it changed everything. It changed our mindset. But when you when you sit there and you mentioned how a lot of people will try to do what, they'll, they'll go out of their way to try to understand what we walk through. But the reality is, is the closest thing that could, they could understand what we walk through is what we're walking through right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you're stuck at home. You're stuck with only a small group of people. Only that small group of people in your house knows what's going on in your house. They don't, they're the ones that understand your situation, whether it was a good day or a bad day or a fun day or a boring day or, right. or a scary day, you know. Exactly. And uh, so it's, it's um, you know, we didn't have the things like football and basketball and all of those things. We didn't, I mean, have, we didn't have TV. We just had our day, Me, you know? We just had our day. Well, I had TV. See, it was different than Desert Storm. I, oh, had, I at least had you, AFN. I had the AFN News Eagle. And Armed Forces and, uh, Network. So and I could know what we're watch about. last year's shows today and that kind of thing. But it, it was TV <laughs> nonetheless. They were new to you. Yeah. It was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, I think one of my favorite shows when I was, in, when I was stationed in Germany back in the 80s was uh, ALF. Alf was good. Alf was good, yeah. And, and even in German, I think, because I memorized him in, in English, I could understand what I knew. I didn't know Alf German. spoke German. Well, I didn't either until <laughs> I went to Germany. <laughs> he was the, good at The it. whole family did. It was <laughs> crazy. They were yeah. naturals, man. Yeah. It was and, crazy. And, uh, but it, we had a great time in the service. We had our ups and downs, and, and the war was, uh, you know, it had its hard times. But when we look back, and I've had people ask me just recently, would you do it all again? You know, even all through the injuries and everything, would you do it all again? And, you know, Joe, I would. I, I feel the same way. I, I even have far-fetched uh, ideas sometimes. I'm like, I wonder if they're looking for helicopter pilots this week. I'll go to the recruiting websites and actually look into that stuff. And uh, truth is, I, I do a very important job out here in the civilian community that I love. And I love not deploying every other year. So right. I don't think I would unless absolutely necessary. But I, I definitely have that thought there's uh, something, often. There's something nice about saying, I'm going to work here every day. And if I decide I want another job where I want to go, I can do it. Yeah. We didn't have that option back no, then. No, no, no. Um, there's there's a big lack of commitment these days in our youth, and you know um, that was the thing. You had to, you had to own it. You had to do what you said you were going to do, whether it was four years or six years or right. eight years. I mean, you had to stick to it, and you had to get through those things. And I think that's why veterans are are able to succeed in different things, especially small business ownership and just entrepreneurship. Right. They do very well because. They set their minds to something and there's there's no, you don't quit. Um, and that, this is one of those moments, you know, the civilian population, hey, just don't quit, you know? Do everything you can, let's get through it and we'll move on and, and, uh, and we'll all be better for it, you know? Yeah, we'll be stronger, we'll know how to react more. Um, what, really te what really shows our character through all of this is how we respond. Yeah, yeah. And we can respond in a, in a positive way. One thing that you brought up earlier about is just Quit spreading rumors and tell the truth. Remember how many times when we were overseas oh, did a the, little rumor come around and you're like... The, they call it the private news network, yeah. right? And that's how it spreads. By the time it's all said and done, the commanding general's finding out where we're going next. And it all started with PV2, <laughs> Curtis Brown. From yeah. the, no. <laughs> but it's, it's just, it's a fact. It happened over there. The key thing is, guys, is we encourage you, stay positive.
do what, what you're asked of. Uh, pray for our leaders. Because Joe and I have served with leaders. He's had to fly commanders. I've had to drive them in, in war zones. But at the same time, we, we learned that they need their mail because it encourages them. They need prayers because they need strengthened by God himself. They, they um, are susceptible to injury just like we are. Yeah. They have families that they miss just like we do or sick people in their families that they're, they're concerned about. They go through everything we go through. Yeah, and you know, I want to take a second. Like flying air medical, I've flown two uh, suspected COVID patients uh, in the last week. And the incredible work that the hospitals are doing and the nurses and the paramedics and the police officers and everybody involved is just unbelievable. Wash your hands, quit touching each other, keep some distance. And it, it keeps yeah, some and, distance. At the same time, and, um, these are simple things that we should have been practicing yeah, all keep, along. Keep doing those things and, and live that, you know, live that hygienic lifestyle every day and just, right. you know, wash them an extra time here and there and we'll get through it. Well, but, hygiene was huge in the military, even in the middle of the desert. We still had hand washing stations and that right. kind of thing because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go away um, even in a desert, you know, right. the flu will you, still you wipe still, out a platoon. You still got to be quick, responsible. So. And, Absolutely. And being responsible for us right now is also being responsible for you and for Tim, my camera guy, uh, amazing guy. Um, for our community. Yep, 100%. That's where it starts. So, Joe, if I were going to ask you to give yourself a commercial pitch for when this is over. <laughs> okay. Shoot me a commercial, man. All right, just visit us at www.flynhs.com. It's fly-nhs.com. Find us on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. We'd love to have you. Take a 10-minute flight, a 30-minute flight, sunset tour. Come shoot some hogs with us in Central Texas. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you for being on here, man. Thank you for your service. Oh, we're not supposed to. Oh, thank there you. you see, see, that was quick response. <laughs> that was a military response that's, on his that's behalf. Pilot, I'm a little older. <laughs> <laughs> or the other one is the foot. The foot, everyone's been yeah, tapping, yeah, yeah, tapping yeah. feet instead of right. shaking hands. And I better watch out before I skid on my, on my caboose here. Yeah. So anyway, guys, just be safe. That's, a, that's a, my encouragement to you. Reach out to Joe and help his business because there's a lot of people struggling. And when this is all over, I, I just pray and I encourage you to support this veteran company and you'll have a blast doing it. Get other people to support him because he's not just about him. He's got a family and he's about community. I've seen this man give to this community like no one else. So uh, just give back to, to your local businesses. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. Pray, pray for our leaders, pray for your family members, spend time and cherish this time. And Joe, what would you tell them to do? All the same, ditto, all the ditto. same. I think we've, we've beat, we're not gonna beat this dead horse any further. That's right. We love you, but more than anything, Jesus loves you. And I'll see you next week. Have a blessed week.